Good morning and welcome to Rise and Shine. I want to share with you a bit of our journey home from our family reunion in Canada last week. We stopped at the Niagara Falls and I never tire of seeing the Niagara Falls. The Niagara Falls is actually made up of three falls, the American Falls and what they call the Bridal Veil Falls, a small falls on the American side. And then on the Canadian side, the Horseshoe Falls. The falls are um, made up from the waters of four of the five Great Lakes, Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, and Lake Erie. I did a little research on this tonight, and it said one-fifth of the world's fresh water is found in these four Great Lakes. So you can drink the water from the Niagara Falls. The flow of water is reduced at night to allow more of the water to flow into the intakes used for power generation. And then it's increased during the day when all the tourists are there. 50 to 75% of the water it is diverted into hydroelectric power generating stations. And the falls actually was originally <clears throat> seven miles downstream, but over the years has eroded. It was eroding at the rate of about um, six feet a year, but now with it more controlled and some of the water being diverted, they have it down to like a, a foot a year. But most of this erosion happens at the base of the falls where the water pounds so hard. So just how much water is in Niagara Falls? I know this is what you all want to know, right? 3,160 tons of water flow every second. 75,750 gallons of water flow over the American Falls and the Bridal Veil Falls, while 6,008, excuse me, 681,750 gallons of water go over the Horseshoe Falls, and that is every second. The water falls 32 feet a second, over the falls, hitting the base of the falls, the American and the Bridal Veil Falls, it, it falls hitting the base with 280 tons of force. Well, over the Horseshoe Falls, it is 2,509 tons of force that it lands at the base of the falls. So no wonder there's erosion. Okay, so just how much water is that? That is enough to fill a million bathtubs every minute. <laughs> that just cracks me up. Job 26 says, he spreads out the northern skies over empty space he suspends the earth over nothing. He wraps up the waters in his clouds, yet the clouds do not burst under their weight. But I just need to read you a little more from Psalm 104. Praise the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. He wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. 
He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains, but at your rebuke, the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder, they took to flight. They flowed over the mountains. They went down into the valleys to the place you assigned for them. You set a boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. This just so amazes me. When I watch that water flowing over the falls, to know that the Lord set those boundaries. <laughs> like, what keeps that water right there and not going any further? It just so amazes me. But let's let me read one one more from Jeremiah, Jeremiah 5. Should you not fear me, declares the Lord? Should you not tremble in my presence? I made the sand a boundary for the sea, an everlasting barrier it cannot cross. The waves may roll, but they cannot prevail. They may roar, but they cannot cross it. Do you think you have a heavy burden today? And I'm sure we all have things that we feel are heavy. But are they too heavy for our God? Oh my, no. If our God can hold the Niagara Falls in the palm of his hand and control where those waters go, when I look at the ocean and I see how it's held within their boundaries, that water cannot go farther than what God allows it to go. I am so amazed. Do you not think he's big enough to take care of all the situations in your life? Yesterday at Ladies Bible Study, we were talking about Anxiety. It says in God's word that Jesus was tempted and tried in every way that we are because he became human. He felt anxiety. When he was in the garden, he said, Oh God, please, can you take this cup from me? But then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. We might think our problems are pretty big. And they are at times. But they're not near as big as Niagara Falls. Or as the oceans. Or the seas that roar. Our Father in Heaven controls all of them. Jesus became human so that he could overcome death and the grave. And the precious Holy Spirit was given to us when we became a Christian. The same power that Jesus was given when he was raised from the dead. Oh my, do you not see our God is bigger than any problems of this world? Today, you may trust your life with him. You may trust him with all of your problems. You may trust him with your anxiety and your concerns and your heartache. 
because he is in control. God's got this. Let him have his way in your life today. God bless you.